Hey everybody, how we doing today? We got a nice day here in the Florida Keys. Uh, but the more important thing is, is I found a new launch spot in the heart of Marathon, not too far away from my house, but it's on the Atlantic side and that's a big deal. So it lets me cover the uh, south side of actual Marathon. So that's what we're gonna do today is to kind of test drive this new spot. And if that works out good, uh, that's gonna be a big deal. Yeah, I like this spot. It's another one of the usual dead-end roads, but uh, this house has been shut down, I'm assuming, since Irma. This house has this big shrubs there, so it's not going to bother them. Plenty of parking spots. Got a picnic bench, so I guess the locals use it. Uh, my car fits between the barriers, so I can drive down pretty close to the water. I wouldn't go too much farther, I'm not sure. Seems like it gets a lot softer there, but... Otherwise, I can get down close enough, slide my kayak down, and boom, we have the Atlantic Ocean. So let's go check it out. So when I'm looking for these spots, uh, it's not only what access it gives me to the different fishing spots, but more so about like where I could park. Is it going to be safe? Is it going to cause problems? Is someone's going to call it cops or have it towed? Uh, then again, how close I can get to the water, how much hassle factor is it going to be to, to unload and load the uh, kayak. And then again, uh, how, uh, how it accesses different fishing spots and then um, what weather conditions I'd be using this spot. Uh, like I've mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of fishing around the big metro island like Marathon, so I really don't fish too much. But uh, sometimes like today where I had to wait an hour and a half because the post office closed so I could deliver my mail before I left. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. It's about three o'clock already. But since this is just right down the street from where I live and it's a quick drop off, very easy and convenient, and I can get out to this Atlantic side waters. Um, not the most optimum because uh, there's not a lot of wind protection outside here. So it's kind of more of when the wind is coming out of the north northerly side over the islands us1 and this side will be protected or on days that it's got lower winds today's not too bad you can see it's fairly flat uh, but all of this is just straight up flats here with a few channels running out for the boaters so there's a bunch of little ribs that kind of go out along the flats to the deeper water but uh yeah so i'm gonna just do a little bit of scouting around taking a look see what's available and then uh, we'll go from there at lower tides this might be an issue because even though there's rocks and stuff on top it's pretty silty oh no no it does have a little bit of silt build up so i gotta watch that i don't want to have to go through some waist deep uh, mud in order to uh, land again i'm going to hit one of these uh deeper channels go out a little bit and then uh i'll give you kind of an overview of this bay all right, uh, let me give you a quick overview of what we're looking at here. We're basically in a very big bay. Um, looking directly north from the Atlantic side to the Gulf side, going east this direction. Uh, we have Key Colony Beach out in that kind of corner there. Cocoa Palms, Cocoa Beach, whatever that's over there. Then in this corner is a Vaca Cut. That's that main channel way and one of the only channel ways that runs from the Gulf to the Atlantic, Atlantic to the Gulf. Uh, unless you go to um, Long Key or to uh, the west at Seven Mile Bridge. So that's the only passageway. Uh, this is actually considered Vaca Key, uh, part of Marathon. Airport's just kind of in that area there in the middle. Uh, I've mentioned before in the videos of touring the island, uh, it's, the Marathon is basically like a fishbone pattern. You have US-1 that runs right down the middle of the length of it going east to west. And then you have all these ribs that run across. They're basically dead end streets, uh, houses on either side, and then each so house has a, a channel running behind it uh, for boats and such. Um, coming around, then we have kind of a dead area. That's kind of what I'm interested in. No residentials really, it's all just the mangroves there. And then uh, to the far west, we have, uh, I think that's East Sister Key. And then just past that on the other side of that, the little peninsula is uh, Sombrero Beach. Um, this is just a big open basin here, uh, extremely flat, and then uh, there's these cuts, channels, run through them to allow the uh, boats to kind of go to the uh, residential areas. 
Uh, but otherwise it's very skinny water out here right now it's high tide so i can get around no problem but at low tide as you can see by the marks this guy got off path here uh it can get basically to uh barely covering your feet and you can walk all the way out here so it does get very shallow at times uh very healthy turtle grass um in regards to the fishing it is a closed basin except for vaca cut so there's not a lot of current but uh it is kind of quite a bit open area here uh, limited boating access during that low tide so it's not always getting run over still it's got the jet ski problems though uh, but then you have these deep channels which are basically fish highways so fish can run from the deeper waters of the Atlantic come through these cuts run off the edges uh, forage and then be able to get back out whenever they want to so uh, flat fishing will be okay I see quite a few guide boats out here um, wind like I mentioned before it's open to the wind when it's uh, any southerly easterly direction because it's such a big basin that doesn't provide a lot of uh, wind coverage over here but uh, when the wind is blowing from the northish anywhere over us1 and this is pretty calm and peaceful here so it'll be worthwhile so what i think i'm going to do i'm not too concerned with all the residential because it's just house to house to house is to work this edge over here where there's a lot less housing access and check that out while the water's high I can make it over to the east sister maybe the beach area check that out uh, but i'd like to get to the uh, deeper end of the flats here to see if there's any uh, tarpon maybe migrating along that edge so that is our plan you could see the change in the grass it's that kind of fluffy moldy mossy stuff eh, glass minnows uh, so this area doesn't get a lot of uh, water flow so it's not very oxygenated and you got all this kind of dead mucky water so this is the area i'm most interested in along this edge where you don't have a lot of residential access but looking at the bottom it doesn't look very promising it's kind of icky now you could even see by the color of the water it's that real tannic color so it doesn't get very much water pushed through good place to go uh shoreline scavenging though <laughs> Look at this guy. He made his own trench. He said, I'm going that way. I don't care. <laughs> it's probably about a foot deep. I got a bunch of these little hidden canals through here. Fortunately, it doesn't go all the way through to the Atlantic side. See US 1 right there. There goes a snook. Little snooky snook. Ah, interesting. Gotta keep my eye out now. So this guy's running right through. Just a lot, tiny, narrow path. I can't even run my motor through this flat stuff and it's high tide, so... These guys gotta know their paths. Yeah, look at that, a free cruiser. Come get it. I see a nice $40 float in there pool noodles good shoreline uh, scavenging area the only bait I'm really seeing a lot of is mohara and I've never seen so many mohara in one spot and it's just fields of them there goes a cuda a couple of cuda in front of them but yeah definitely lots of mohara if you need that I actually see something that I might use or I can actually use a seat cushion. But this place is Bucket City if you need buckets. That's for sure. But if that's a good condition. Ugh. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Alright. That'll work. Seat cushions are always good. Ooh, it's even a Coast Guard certified one. Handles. Nice. Make sure it's not all ripped up. Yeah, good condition too. Nice. All right, we've made it as far as I need to look. We start getting into the residentials along Sombrero Beach there. Just past the high school, I could see the uh, stadium lights there. So I'm going to get this channel, run out, and then run out to the... Uh, little east sister key there get on the other side and take a look at that 
getting shallower. The birds are walking around and not even getting their feet wet. Ah, another free boat there. Just bring your uh, tow boat. Take it home with you. All right, we made it to the channel. Fire up this motor and get out of here. All right, we made it. We're out in open water. Oh, we call the bait. Bait, 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 bait. It's all glass minnows, small pilchards. Man, it's just blacked out. That's good to know. All right, we made it around the corner. There's that little sister key there. You can see how much the water clarity and uh, the healthy bottom it is because you got this water passageway. That's why current is so important. It's food and oxygen. Looks so much better out here. And these sand spots will make it easier to see like a big tarpon running through. Pretty nice spot over here. Saw a juvenile tarpon. It's one of the residential ones that lives over here. Not the big boys. And we made it to Sombrero Beach there. Unfortunately, no good kayak access. There used to be one on the west side of the beach, but that's been shut down and gated off. So that's why I really never come down this side. And there we go. That's the full on Sombrero Beach all along there. And then there's an outlet that runs that side. Go around and you get to Boot Key, but uh, that'll be a different day. All right. I think, oh, there's some fishies. I think I'm gonna go check out that uh, little sister key and see what the structure is like over there. It's a little bit rough today, but just so that I know. Well, I saw another school of tarp in there, so maybe I'll drift over them. I don't have a bait to throw on them, so I'll have to see what I've got. All I've got is my big tarp in, uh, oh, what's that, shark? My big tarp in bait, but Hey, that's not a nurse shark. That looks like a black tip. Stalking me. Fall, fall, fall. Let's see if they might go for it. Oh, shark. That was the shark. Should anchor up. That might help. Yeah, they're all around me here. Took me too long to anchor, so I'm right in the middle of their patch. You can see them right down there. There's three or four of them. I think they know I'm here. See them right there? Yeah. That was poor anchoring. Poor anchoring, wrong bait. Just dragging my anchor right through them. Yeah, they're all right there. They just won't leave this spot. Imagine all these houses just feed them, they're their pets. Well, let me go check out that house and then uh, I'll come back and not anchor right on top of them. All right, here's that eastern, whoa, little sister island there, somebody's cool house. Really nice broken bottom out here. If it wasn't for all the boat traffic, 
It'd be a great place to snorkel, not too deep. A little bit rough for sight fishing today though. And then from here straight out is uh, Sombrero Reef. Go diving out there. There's another one of the lighthouse thingies out there marking the edge of the reef, outside edge. But uh, there's also some good patch reefs uh, in not too far out from here versus where I launch out of the seven mile. It's pretty barren, but uh, out here halfway through is some uh, decent patch reefs. So well, that's always a good option. But yeah, not too bad. So I'm gonna head in and then uh, go right along the edge of the reef here and check it out. Look at that big boy Cuda. Dang. I came back here. So this is my plan. I would cast net, look at all these glass minnows here. I'm sure there's pilchers probably below them. But I would cast net these, take them over there to the corner where I saw those schools of uh, tarpon because I saw um, a bunch of mangroves under those uh, tarpon. And then I'd be sprinkling these guys out there, start a uh, feeding frenzy and just bend a rod. That would be my number one game plan. Look at all these glass minnows. I see pilchards underneath them. So it's a mixture. I was just about to throw the cuda tube over here too. That big old hog. Yeah, good bait source. Not seeing anything beyond that cuda though. But that's kind of what I would do for a bending a rod fun day. Um, what I'm going to do now is try to find the flats edge and then work it across so I hit the entrance ways to all those uh, little cuts going to the residentials. There was actually a flats boat working that edge that I came down that I didn't really like. They put a little bit of time in there so maybe there's something to that over there. And there they are. Nice. The only good thing is that I have a feeling the local fish around here are used to getting run over. So it's maybe not that big of a deal, but yep, jet skis. Ooh, I saw a school of bonefish. Where did they go? Oh, right there. Dang it. Was not ready for that. Right in this sand spot. That was the first bonefish I've seen in a long time. And even though I ran right up to them, they didn't like scatter, like freaked out. They just kind of, all right, let's take them a swim and move out of here. But I have a feeling that's kind of because they're so used to all the boats coming through here which is actually, I guess, helpful for me. Ooh, this might work out perfectly. The sun is gonna burn through that. I might have some clear skies. You can see this kind of uh, sandy patch that just runs straight through there. That's kind of where they were working it, so. I'm gonna give it a little bit until that totally clears. And then I'm just gonna push my way through there and see if I could see them. Hmm, this might work out nice. There they go. They were swimming right into me. Two of them. Golly. It might be almost better if I just park myself. Bones, bones, bones. I've been looking for you guys for so long down here and they're right in front of my house. Oh, spooked him. Come back. Oh, he's coming back for it. Oh, I can't anchor. Oh, he's right there. He's looking for it. Looking for it. I don't know where. Oh, there he is. I think he's got on it. I think he's on it. Oh, oh, he's looking for it. Oh, 
It's right there. Oh, he's looking for it. Oh, way too high. Oh, that spooked him. Golly. Oh, dang it. All right. I'm going to anchor up crackly, get this pointed the right direction so I'm into it, and just let them come to me. Oh, man. I found my bonefish. So one of the things I need to do, um, I need to get what time it is, mark the uh, current so I know uh, what current I'm seeing these fish. So they're going to be out here every single time that that current matches it. So start getting my uh, systems in place. All right, we're all set up. I got the anchor at the front. That way I'm facing with the wind to my with the sun to my back so I could see even though they could have come up from behind me but I've been tracking more of them coming this way I didn't want to get too far because that uh, white sand like this bottom here ends up there so I'm kind of probably about halfway I've got a uh, esky shrimp with a 1 8 ounce uh, jig head Just what I had but the eighth ounce is fine I just need something to get it out there and then I'm just gonna wait for them to kind of work this edge and try to get it out in front of them so let's see what happens that's three different uh, sets of uh, bonefish that I've seen that's awesome where are they going oh oh they're, they're right on it oh he's looking at it He's looking at, oh, he bit it and he let it go. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, that spooked him. That spooked him. Oh, they're coming back. There's a whole big old school of them. Dang it. I found bonefish heaven. I need my fly rod. I've seen more bonefish here in this last 25 minutes than I have seen the whole year and a half that I've been looking for them on the backcountry side. And I'm gonna live right there. All right, I switched to the uh, Esky uh, natural color. Okay, since it's really clear here, it's not so much contrast to it. I think that'll be a little bit, uh, make them a little bit less suspicious here, so. Let me have uh, one more try. The fifth try is the charm. Oh, he's looking for it. There we go. Dang it, dang it, there he is right there. Oh, 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 oh. He hit it. Where did they go? Oh, I grabbed it and I pulled it out of his mouth. Oh, God. All right. The sixth time is a charm. Give me one more chance. Man, I need my fly rod. There's just a couple of them, a little bit bigger ones than the other ones. God, they were all over it. They're freaking hungry. Um, there he goes, there he goes. Got him. Run, run, run. Got him, got him, got him. Seven time is a charm. Cause I am that good. <laughs> oh yes. He whacked it good. And I'm looking for more. Greedy Steve. I got plenty of line for you, dude. Greedy Steve. Oh, I got to get my bonefish net fixed. All the rats ate all the netting off of it. I bought the replacement mesh, but uh, I need to restring it. There he is. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, drop my anchor. We got the bonefish. 
so happy. I've been looking for a spot for so long and it's right here. Group, but I'm gonna lose this thing, I'm gonna be pissed messing around with this GoPro. Where are you at? Oh. And come around to this side, buddy. Come around to this side. You done? Yeah, it's a nice one. Oh, I need my bonefish net. Ugh. Yeah, you're not so bad. I'll let you go. Oh, whoa. Bam! Whoa. There we go. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's got the you can't keep the esky shrimp in the natural color there. Oh, it's a nice chunker in the sun. Boom! All right. I've been looking for you for so long! Now I know where you live! That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Seven shots, victory! Dang it, one snuck up from behind me. Went that way. I just can't see from this side. of the low sun all right so now i don't want to brag but i will say i am wearing the all about the bait flat shirt we got the permit on the front the bonefish on the back and bam we got our bonefish oh did i scare one i heard a pop but um for those that have been following my sight fishing 101 uh, this has been a perfect example of how that works. So I wanted to work this flats. I don't know really too much about it. Uh, so I'm pretty much running and gunning. So that's the fast. I'll just go hit spot to spot. And I'm not really looking to catch anything. I'm wanting to uh, spook up fish, kick them out of there so that I see them. And I know that, hey, that's a decent spot there. So I ran up and I saw that first school. So boom, I shut it off, said, okay. I saw that stretch of sand, so okay, it looks pretty good. That's why they're there. Uh, then I go to a slow mode, which is getting out my push pole and basically pushing along. Then I ran into two more schools that way, and then it's like, okay, it's not the most effective way to, especially with this wind, to try to stop, switch over to my pole, make a good cast, all the while I'm drifting backwards. So then I went to stop mode dropped the anchor and just basically waited for them to come to me having my rod prepared bait repaired ready to just uh, cast it out there and that's how it worked out uh took seven shots but i wouldn't have known about those fish if i didn't like run up on them right away and then do all those different steps the alternative is is i could have just spent the whole day and not really covered very much water at all and it's very hit and miss so uh that uh side fishing 101 it works, check it out. All right, so instead of uh, hanging around here, getting more shots, I'm, I'm thinking that I'll keep seeing them running down this uh, sand patch, but I wanna get out and uh, hit the ends of, ooh, I don't know what that was. Oh, it looks like a ray coming here towards me, or a shark maybe. But I wanna hit the ends of the different cuts that run to the residentials, and just to be able to see what those look like so I could, uh, know them when i see them you can see they've got them marked with the orange flags 
in the white poles all the different ones so I'm gonna go check those out and see what this thing is see if there's anything following it looks like a nurse shark a lot of times you'll find uh, bonefish following the sharks jacks as well because as they're swimming around in the shallows they kick up and scare things so those uh, bonefish and jacks will uh, scoop up whatever they scare up I don't see anything behind them oh there was one there he is right there oh he's looking at it there got him got him <laughs> That one was on the fly. <laughs> oh. You can run, but you cannot hide. Yeah, I figured there'd be one at the end of this sandbar. coming right at me oh my anchor I mean I uh, 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 uh. there we go <laughs> score oh get out of the weeds Dang YouTube. Get in there. Dang it. There he goes. Oh, got him in the weeds. Man, bonefish central. There we go. Oh, come on, camera, work with me. Bonefish time! Esky shrimp and bone shrimp, bonefish. Like peanut butter and jelly. All right, let's land ya. Done. Tail. There we go. Full effect. All right. Did good, buddy. Uh, release you here. Uh, quick and easy. Nice and shiny. Whoa. There it goes. Oh. And that's what we do. And that's what we're looking for there. Sweet. And you can see that dust right there. That was one. Spooked him off. He ran into me. Couldn't turn the camera on fast enough and then grab my rod. Look at this big boy here. Big shark -a sharky Can you see him? Big old lemon. I'm gonna touch you. I'm gonna touch your tail. <laughs> I touched you. Don't come back and eat me. I was just playing, man. I was just playing. YouTube man, don't go all crazy. Ooh, he got scared. All right, we're into the white patch. Uh, the water is definitely getting deeper. I did see that last one, but uh, it's rising, so we're not too far away from the entry points. Let's go check them out. Trail of water. Oh, look at that big old tarpon. That one was a permit. What the heck is going on? What are you guys doing? Oh, oh. There he is. Oh! 
Oh, that spooked him. That scared him. There was a permit, so I stopped, turned off the motor, and then that big old tarpon was falling right behind him. What the heck? My grand slam in this one little spot. Here's an old uh, Cuban uh, tugboat here. Huh, this is kind of fresh. It's got the hand line. Six cylinder there, four cylinder. Don't know if they may or not. A lot of gas. That's their gas tank. Just foam bags wrapped up for flotation. All handmade rudder there. Oh, the old yo-yo for food. Backpack, life jackets, flippers for swimming. They're going to make a swim for it. More stable than my kayak. <laughs> That's actually a pretty cool designed one there. Huh. Not bad. So right now we're at high tide, so there's really no issue getting in. But this one is my channel to go back into my car over there. But as you can see, it's pretty deep. check spots in closer I'll go to this one over here then move in yeah it's all milked up on the inside here there's some nice sand patches there water level is kind of high though I'll see what the clarity is Yeah, I can't see anything on this one. It is too mucky. And deep. School of Permit, right over there. Oh, 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 big old school of them. God dang it. Oh, big shark there too. That's a big school. And look at that. I could back right up to it when the water's up at least. Nice. All right, we're back and we're loaded up, all ready to go. Man, today was awesome. Very happy about it. Got a new launch spot and then a new uh, flat spot, bonefish heaven. Uh, I saw four schools of permit just in the end here. So, um, from six inches to about a foot, bonefish all over. Once that gets up to about a foot to foot and a half, then those permits start moving in. And I even saw that big tarpon coming through there. So yeah, excellent. Don't have to make the ride down the, the big pine in that area and have thousands of different spots to go. I just come out here and I know a few. So I think what I'll do is, I, I was planning on going back up to big pine tomorrow, but I think I'm gonna come out here um, re-verify my spots to that those fish are still going to be there since we'll be on the same tide cycle. I think the winds drop and then the sun is out full day so uh, that would be even better condition so I could really check things out. And then uh, I might try to pick up about a half a dozen different spots uh, that are kind of similar that I know about and then uh, we'll go from there. The other thing I'm going to do is uh, bring out a bag of shrimp. Um, use those to chum up the bonefish even faster uh, so I can get a good count but also to see if I can attract blue crabs so if I could attract small blue crabs and then I'll have uh, something for those permit and then on top of that I'm going to bring my fly rod so I could do that for the bonefish and the permit so yeah man very happy about it excellent launch spot close to home very close to home just across the street and boom Marathon's been holding out on me. <laughs> but uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.